Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. So what I have on the bench here is some parts out of a car. These are from a 2005 Toyota Corolla, and maybe you can guess what they are already by looking at them. And I'll be honest guys, I'm a little bit scared. This is gonna be a tough one. Let me take you over to the car and show you where this is from. All right, so we're over here at the car, and this is the driver's side seat in the car and everything mounts up here underneath the seat. In fact, there's actually a hole here in the carpet where these handles stick through when this guy is installed. And you pull one of these to, to open the trunk and you pull the other one to open the fuel door. And there's two cables here uh, that attach into that part. And it just basically, we could actually just by hand pull on these cables to release the trunk and release the fuel door. You gotta pull pretty hard, but I know they, they do work and neither one of them feels like it has more tension on it than it should, so I think this part just probably just wore out from, from use. Um, it's tough to see down here, but basically this piece here is oriented like this. Here's where the bolt was, and so imagine that in this position. And if I show you down here, you can see I left the bolt in place where that bolt's up to. So the, that, the entire part is basically inside um, of this bar that runs across that also um, holds the seat in place, the seat mounts to that. So it's a tricky area to work in. I'm probably not gonna have a lot to film as far as actually installing this part and getting everything connected just because of how tight it is down here, but I don't think that's gonna be the hard part. It wasn't that terrible to get this guy out. Uh, I had to take off his trim piece to get the carpet pulled back, but I think the hard part is gonna be in the design work. Now I could certainly just buy this part from Toyota. This car is old, but it's not that old. They still make the part. It's a little north of 150 bucks to go just buy the part from the dealership. I looked, I can get it a little bit cheaper online, but by the time you pay shipping, it eats up any of the discount that you got by buying it online versus just driving to the dealer to buy it. And I, I think we can make this part with 3D printing. Yeah, it's gonna be challenging. There's a lot to this, but I still think it's a good fit for 3D printing. It's, I think it's gonna be good video content. And hey, anybody watching this video that needs this part, because I'm pretty sure there was just a few of these Corollas made. Uh, you know, if you've got a 3D printer and you're watching this, well, you can make your own part too. So, all right, let's go back to the bench and see what we got here to work with. All right, let's take a look at what we have. So this is that main piece that actually mounts up underneath the, the driver's seat on the left, and you can see where this is broken off here. And I do have the, the broken pieces here that we can measure from if need be, but that is where the bore was for that bolt to go through to hold this guy. Now, I'm worried about this project for a number of reasons. Uh, the first one is just the overall complexity of the design. There's a lot of parts here that have to work together, and they have to work together pretty accurately. Uh, you saw the two cables that are going to need to be held in place down here. Those attach to both of these release handles. And these release handles have to swing on here in a rather accurate fashion. So let's see, these guys... Yeah, so this has like a, uh, a section here that keys into this board down here, or this, I guess, counterboard that then has a rod also coming out of it that is tapered on the end for the other piece to fit into. So this actually rotates. It hinges basically on this raised section here. So this one fits on here first. It swings again on that, on this, this surface here and the inside of this board down here. Then this one fits over it. That one swings on the inside. Actually, no, that one isn't gonna swing on the inside diameter. It's also gonna swing on this OD uh, down here in this board. And you can see some grease on this guy as well. We'll have to remember that when we put this back together that it should have some grease on it. And then this is tapered here. I think that lines up with, actually that's probably just for the mold release for this part. That probably doesn't necessarily need to be tapered, but we are gonna have to taper it because we're we're gonna reuse, so I do intend to reuse the release handles. I don't think there's any reason to model these. This one I did break, taking it apart. There's only one of the snap pins at the end. If it ends up that that snap pin is not gonna be enough to hold this guy in place, I think we could probably just uh, drill down the center of this and tap it and put a bolt in from the other side to retain that. Uh, but this guy snaps on here. I'm not going to go all the way because I don't want to have to release it again. And it is stopped by this 
peg, I guess we'll call it, that sticks out here. So this one, the travel stopped by this arm that sticks down, that rides in this slot. I guess it's also stopped by this. It probably doesn't actually contact it. No, it looks like it stops just short of contacting it. This one is actually stopped by that piece there. You guys see that? Because it has nothing that sticks down on the bottom. So we have to hit all those dimensions dead on. Uh, we've got to hit the, the retention or the, the stops dead on. Uh, it's going to be tough to measure the angles on this because this is an injection molded part, which means there's going to be draft angles all over this guy so that it releases from the mold when it's made. And there's also, I'm sure, several design characteristics on this that have a lot to do with the process that it was made with, again, injection molding, versus the actual functionality of the part. Like, I don't think this serves any function. I think that's just to strengthen the part based on the process. Same thing with all of the, all of these extra angles up here and the part that's broken off. I think that was just a, in an attempt to strengthen it. Um, this, I think, kind of locks in on the back part of that, uh, that brace that runs underneath the seat that the seat also mounts on. And then if I recall, these guys here are where the springs mounted to. Yeah, these are sort of like spring hangers, and the springs come down and grab onto uh, these pieces here on the release handles. So the other thing is, well, okay, so that's the design challenges. From a printing challenge, there's no good surface to print this guy on. I'm probably going to end up having to, uh, I guess, either print it on the front face here, but that's going to be tough because then there's no way, we, yeah, we actually, that's not going to work. We can't do that because there's just no way that we're going to get the concentricity on the OD or these bores here that we need to be basically precision surfaces for these handles to swing on. So that really needs to be facing up to get those features, which means we're gonna to have to print this guy with essentially this face down on the build plate and have supports all underneath here so that we get all of these features up here nice and clean, which actually should work to our benefit. We should get nice clean features here uh, for those areas that the uh, the release cables key into as well. Those are also going to have to be tight fits. Uh, the cables have like a, uh, sort of like a, I think it, look like, it looks like, it's probably plastic. It seemed like almost ceramic uh, at the end of those, uh, those cables that pushes down into these and locks in place. So these are going to have to be snug enough uh, to keep that in place, but loose enough and flex enough that we can push those down in and get them to lock. However, that's not even the biggest challenge. This is a part that goes in a car. That car is going to be really hot in the summer, and this part's under a lot of stress. Even just st sitting static, you know, without anybody pulling on the levers, there's spring tension on this. The spring tension is going to be constantly pulling on these two parts here. It's probably going to be, actually, it's going to be pulling on everything, because think about it. If I put this guy back on, so... The cable pull is down here. The spring attaches, actually I'm not sure where the spring attaches on this, oh okay, it attaches back here. So the spring for this lever goes on this side, the spring for the other lever goes on this side. So there's also gonna be constant tension on this piece here because that's the other end of our spring. And yeah, I mean, we're not really stretching the spring all the way out unless we're turning this, but the spring's under tension here. I could pop it back on, see what I'm talking about. Actually, we don't even need to put it all the way on. You can see the spring doesn't quite make it all the way. So it's gonna be under a small amount of tension, even when this guy is, you know, in the, you know, the position where uh, it's just static waiting for you to, to pull it. Where am I going with all that? Well, we can't print this out of PLA. Um, I don't even think PETG is the right choice. This part now um, from Toyota, I believe, is ABS plastic. I couldn't find any markings on it that actually said what type of material it is, but I checked. I don't feel any fibers 
in the part. I don't think it's like fiber reinforced. I think it's just plain old ABS plastic. So I wanna try and make this out of ABS plastic. I've never printed ABS plastic. I've avoided it because of you know, the potential uh, you know, harmful nature of the fumes. I think I have a solution for that. But either way, I've still never printed ABS plastic, so that's gonna be a challenge in and of itself. So I think I'm just gonna go start designing. I think I'm gonna draw this piece to the best, or measure and draw this piece to the best of my ability, and then just start test fitting um, both the piece in the car as well as the handles uh, to this piece uh, to see where things are lining up, where they're not. I'll prototype in PLA because that's gonna be real fast and real easy, and then as we get close to a final design, we'll tackle the ABS piece. All right guys, and here's where I'm at on the design for this so far. I say so far because it's definitely not done, but I wanna stop and do a test print because there's just so many features on here that all interact with each other. Those handles both swing on, well, one swings on the outside diameter of, of this, one swings on the inside diameter. They have to click into place. Uh, they have to interact with these stops down here. So one stop based on this peg, but the other one passes through this peg as well. And then the, there's a stop back here as well. There's a piece that moves that goes all the way through this hole uh, and then hits against these end stops. I, I'll be really shocked if all that lines up on the first shot. And I don't want to start modeling any other features on here until I know for sure that this stuff lines up. In fact, I probably got ahead of myself modeling uh, these features here where the, uh, the cable sheaths uh, snap into. Uh, I'm definitely going to need to reinforce these behind it. And... I didn't even bother modeling the, the, uh, the purchase for the springs yet. There is a spring on either side of this for each handle that returns it to the starting position. Uh, so we're gonna need to model those in a future revision as well. But I think this is far enough along that I wanna print it. We're just gonna do it in PLA. I just wanna see how things fit. And you know, then we can make adjustments. And as we get closer to a finished piece, we are at some point gonna to have to switch to ABS in the prototyping for this because that might change our dimensions a bit since I think ABS, if I'm not mistaken, has a tendency to uh, to shrink a little bit when it prints and it can also warp. So, all right, let's get a test piece done in PLA and just kind of see where we're at. All right, and here is our first test piece. Let's see how we did. So this goes on like this and it does push in there, it's a little tight. This, uh, this, there's more resistance in moving this than I would like. Uh, let's compare that to the factory one. Yeah, that's, that's when you can see even just gravity is returning this guy. But there's really no play in there either. So we're going to have to get that bore uh, just like dead on. Yeah, this one is just, you can see, it's, it's not returning. Um, but it doesn't, it's not trying to pop out either, so we're close. We can just make that bore a little bit bigger. We are not in the right position with either this block or this slot down here because I'm hitting a stop on this end, but we're not hitting the stop here. If we compare that to the factory part, we're hitting the stop here, and we're all the way at the end of this slot. So we'll need to tweak that. But it's not terrible, it does, does fit. I don't think it's contacting. Actually, you know what? It might be hitting that. 
Yeah, I think it might not be this board that's off. This guy might just be slightly out of position. Yeah, I think, I think this surface here, this face up here, this curved surface is actually hitting uh, our post that's sticking up here. So I'm probably going to need to just move that guy a little bit. Let's see if this one fits. Uh, no, that's it's not going down as far as it should. Yeah, that should be going down. So that this should go all the way on this until that point. And if we look in there, we can see that now that we're to the point where this guy is going to push through that sloped uh, like inside bore. And then this guy will pop out. We're not getting that far on this one. So there's like a bottom to that hole. And I think that bottom needs to be lower. And I think it needs to neck down as it approaches the, the end. I don't know that we actually need this beveled face here. Yeah, I think we do. I think looking at this piece, and I think I mentioned that before too, I think just the way the mold was for this piece, it doesn't go down to, um, it's not like a flat edge down there. I think that's just needed for clearance uh, for this piece. Uh, I also didn't attempt to even model the uh, the holders for the springs yet, so we'll have to do that as well. And we're going to have to do something to strengthen, uh, strengthen down here. This is so this part's it's mounted into the car like this. All the force is going to be pulling on this this way. It's going to be trying to you know rip this apart. Uh, well, this part's going to be stationary, but it's going to be yanking against this and twisting it. And I don't think this is going to stand up to that force unless we reinforce. Uh, th that corner down there. If we look at the original piece, they have some bracing here. Yeah, they actually haven't done that much to reinforce that. Um, well, no, I guess not really, but I think we're going to need to do that in our part. All right, overall, we're close on most of the features. I think the thing to do next is to go and make the adjustments that I noticed in testing and print again and just see where we're at. All right, and here is our second test piece. And I just seeing, I forgot to put the bevel uh, out here on the end of this post, but I did change the position of this piece. I changed the position of that slot a little bit. I modeled the, uh, the, the spring perches or the, you know, the, the pins here where the hooks that hold the springs. And I put a relief in here as well because when I took our V1 piece, and I sort of imagined where that uh, where that spring perch was going to be. Uh, there there needs to be a relief for the spring in there. This material being solid here isn't going to work. That's again kind of back to one of the first things I said. We don't really know what features of this are due to the process and you know um, injection molding versus what's actually needed in the design. And I actually thought that was originally just to reduce the uh, the depth needed for. Uh, this piece that comes through here, but when I held the spring up against it, I realized that we were going to need that relief. Now, I don't think it needs to be that big. They've got it as this huge, like, inset over here. I want to keep as much strength in this part as we can. So I kept the majority of the material over here and just tried to carve out the swath that we need for that spring to, uh, to fit in. So let's see how we did. Okay, so that fits on there nicely now. Still a little snug, but it feels good. It starts to pop out a little bit, um, but I, I wouldn't. I don't think we need to make another adjustment there. I think that's good, but let's see how the spring is. We need to put this end on first. I need the pliers for this. I right, just grabbed a small set of pliers to help get this guy on. Okay. So that looks like there is probably enough clearance. We are a little close. We're close back here and we're actually a little close up here as well. And we have way more, uh, way more material out on this side than we need. If you look at that arc, when this guy travels, uh, we could put most of this back in, but we need a little bit more clearance here and a little bit more clearance here. But that works well enough to test. So I'm happy with that. Let's see about our other one. I 
don't want to push this guy all the way in. Oh, you know what? Uh, it actually doesn't go all the way in anyway because I forgot to put that taper there. But it goes deeper than it did before. So let's get this back apart. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go adjust this inset here. We will uh, put the taper out here on the end of this post. And I think I'm also going to take a crack at strengthening this area here uh, because we've got a good amount of clearance there. So if this guy's on here like this, we have all of this real estate here in the corner that it looks like nothing would be touching. Anything between this face here and this face back here is free space for us to try and strengthen that corner. So I'll take a crack at that. I'll bring you guys back. All right, and here is our third test piece. And I believe I made all the changes that I planned on. We definitely adjusted, let's see, here's our previous one. You can see the difference in the, uh, the cutout here for that spring to swing in. And I also added a good bit of reinforcement over here in the corner of this guy that should be well clear uh, of the swing. And I didn't just add it in, um, this sort of pyramid shape here, or this triangle that lays against those, those two faces. Uh, I increased the thickness of this whole section and also added a lot of bracing around where these cables attach to. Yeah, that feels really good on there. We are not hitting any of the reinforced areas. We're just clear of them. We look good over here. Let's try that spring. Yeah, that looks really good. We pretty much only now have the area cut out that we need for the travel of that spring. Let's see if this piece goes on. Oh yeah, that's actually wanting to go. But I'm, I'm tempted to push that all the way in. I think I just did. Yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, well that's all right. That should pop out pretty pretty easily. So that piece fits just fine now. It's locked in place. And that is, yeah, I can just kind of flick it to, to reset it. So I think we're the right size on those, uh, those features as well. Let's try the spring. So fuel and trunk. All right, guys, it's time to quit messing around. I picked up a roll of ABS plastic in black. I went with Hatchbox just because it was gonna get here the fastest and I am impatient. And if you've been following along, we have been printing this guy just in, or we've been prototyping it in PLA. And PLA is plenty strong enough for this part. I mean, I could probably bolt this up in the car right now and if everything else is good with our design, I think it would work. The problem is when this car is parked in the hot sun in the summer, and someone gets in and goes to use the trunk release or the fuel door release, uh, these are just gonna bend. Uh, these pieces back here that hold the, uh, uh, the cable liner and maybe even just these spring perches with the tension of the springs on them, uh, just stationary. It's, just, it's not gonna hold up, it's not, it's not gonna work. So I've known that from the beginning. I've got a couple of challenges to solve in printing this filament that I'm gonna go start messing with. Uh, the main one is fume extraction, but I think I have that figured out. I think I can just use the same fume extraction setup that I have for my resin printing. Basically, I like I teed into my radon mitigation piping in my basement so that I can unscrew a cap and suck out all the air in the area that my X1C printer and my resin printer are. I've never tried to use that for FDM printing. I don't know if it's gonna move enough air. I have the hood kind of like right over the resin printer, but I think it'll work. The other one is keeping this filament dry. I can dry this filament out in my filament dryer before I print, but I wanna make sure that I can keep this filament dry and warm during the print. So I've got some ideas for that. I'm gonna go start messing around with that and I'll bring you guys back after I've had some time to see what works and what doesn't work. All right guys, it's been just a couple of seconds for you, but it has been days for me and I've learned quite a bit. Uh, here's my test print. You can see I didn't get very far. I'm just holding this. This one's PLA. I'm just holding it so you can see what part of the print it is. 
Um, good news is the fume extraction worked really, really well. In fact, it was, it was I, I couldn't detect any, any smell at all, so I, I closed off the fume extraction and within minutes, the whole room smelled terrible. So the fume extraction's working really well as long as I remember to unscrew the cap and you know, run it while I am printing. Um, bad news is this is as far as I got because it essentially ran out of filament. So I talked about trying to dry the filament. I went and I picked up a toy. Let me grab it for you guys. Okay, so the other problem I was trying to solve for was keeping the filament dry during printing and keeping the filament dry between prints. And that's not just a problem I needed to solve for this project. Ever since I moved the AMS from my X1C to my P1S, I'm just using the, the roll holder on the back of the X1C. And I actually entertained the idea of buying another AMS uh, for filaments that you really need to dry and keep dry. The thing is, all the cool engineering filaments that I want to be able to run on my X1C, you're not supposed to put in the, the AMS anyway because they are abrasive. Now, ABS is not abrasive, but everything else I want to run, uh, like the carbon fiber PLA, polycarbonate, all that other cool stuff, you're not supposed to put in the AMS because it's abrasive and it wears the parts out. So I've been wondering what's out there as far as a solution for a while. And I chose this. This is the Every One filament dryer box. This is not sponsored. I bought this with my own money. In fact, I bought two of these because I'm going to give one away to you guys. Uh, this channel just turned 3,000 subscribers, which is huge. Thank you so much for your subscriptions. Thank you so much for your comments, your likes. Uh, so to say thank you, I picked up a second one of these and I'm going to give it away. So hang out to the end of the video if you want to learn how you can get that. But back to this. I have a love-hate relationship with this guy so far. Mostly love. Uh, but there's a couple features or functions of it that I'm not so keen on and I've already made some modifications to it. So I purchased this one for a couple of reasons. Uh, the main one is it has a heating element in it, but also has a fan. So many of these dryer boxes have, I don't know, like token five watt heaters in them that really don't do anything and they don't move any air around. This one is more watts. It is, let me see. Yeah, this one's 48 watts of which I'm guessing 45 watts is probably the heating element, maybe three watts for the fan, uh, but also has the fan to move air around. And there's actually a spot in the bottom where you can put desiccant in it as well. Uh, it also has rollers in here uh, for your filament roll to, to glide on. And it has an exit point in the front for filament. Now it gets me to my first hate on this. I don't understand why they put the exit for the filament on the front. That means that this thing ends up at some angle where you can't see the display up here for your temperature and humidity, and you can't really see what you're doing trying to load the filament. So first thing I did was go ahead and just drill a hole uh, in the same size on the back of this guy. But when I went to uh, print this part, I mentioned that I only got this far because the filament was jamming. And actually what was going on was the, uh, the roll of filament here. Let me grab the the uh, this hatch box ABS. This roll is huge. Um, I have a bunch of ha ha hatch box PLA as well and the rolls are like two millimeters narrower on the PLA than they are on the ABS and this roll just simply doesn't fit in here. Well it does but it doesn't. Like it doesn't fit in there the way it's supposed to. Uh, it jams on these plastic uh, pieces that retain the bearings so you have to kind of put it in there sideways and it still doesn't roll very well. And what was happening was the, the tube, uh, the, the PTFE tube was getting sucked into the box. So it actually happened during the second test print. I, I couldn't understand what happened the first time that it failed. The second one, I caught it and uh, what it was doing is it was sucking this tube into the box um, as it was trying to feed the filament. So on the fly, I actually just designed this guy. I, kept, I pulled this out enough because it wasn't sucking it in super fast. It was very gradual, the process of this getting pulled in and it would wrap around the spool. Uh, so I pulled it out and I made this piece here that just, I was able to pull the PTFE tube all the way out, slip it over the filament, slip the PTFE tube into here, and then it just kind of pulled this guy up against the back of the filament dryer and allowed that print to finish. Um, I know that wasn't going to be a permanent solution, so then I designed... 
uh, this piece to go into my hole. And by the way, this is just th this hole in the back that I drilled, it's really the same as the hole in the front. You'd have the same exact problem with the hole in the front of the box. It would just be on the front instead of the back. But it, you would, you'd have the same problem. This, I'm not having this problem because I chose to modify uh, this to better suit my needs. Um, but this piece that I designed here uh, just presses into the box. It's got like a lip here that retains it on the inside. So it's kind of pops in place and then just stays stationary. And then it has, it comes back, it's got a, a face here that is big enough to keep it from getting sucked through uh, the filament dryer box on the back. And then uh, the, the post here is for the PTFE tube to press into so that it stays in place. And this works great. Now with these modifications, I am very happy with this, but whoever gets the free one of these, or if you buy one of these, and I'll put a link to this down in the description of this video too if you want one, I would recommend the same modifications. Drill the hole in the back, uh, print my piece, and I'll have the STL uh, in the STL pack for uh, today's design, and pu push your PTFE tube in and go from there. The other one simple problem I had to solve was, so I think the, the dryer actually came with a PTFE tube. The problem is on the back of the printer, you also have just a bare PTFE tube sticking out of the back to feed your filament in. Now, the AMS does come with a coupler that you can use, but again, I took that and put it on my other printer, so I had no way to couple the lines together. It took me a while, but I found, I believe it might even be the same part that um, Bamboo Labs uses, uh, these little uh, push connectors. It just pushes right on there and locks, and then you can squeeze this uh, to get it to unlock and pop it off. So this locks onto this side of the tube for the filament dryer, and then presses into place on the one on the back of the printer uh, quickly and easily so I can switch between using the filament dryer box and just having the roll on the back of the printer. So I'll link to these in the description of this video as well. And here's the first test piece in ABS, and I'm pretty pleased with how this came out. Um, the surface finish on it isn't quite as good as the PLA, but dimensionally it looks pretty good. I don't see any warping. I did uh, check a couple different dimensions with calipers and everything looks like it is still spot on. Let's see if, uh, let's see if stuff fits. Oh, that's tight. We're actually back to the same now. It's, you know what? It's actually even tighter now than it was on our first PLA test print. So that probably did shrink a little bit. Um, not much. I mean, that was a really close fit before. So it might have shrunk 0.1 millimeters. Yeah, so we'll have to adjust that bore. But everything else, like this is still in the right position. This is still in the right position. Let's see how this one fits. Yep, that's, oop, it actually clicked in. So that one's good. The dimensions on where this one's keying in are good, but we need to make this a little bit bigger on this. Uh, I'll go over to the car and check the test fit, or I'll test fit for our cable sleeves to make sure that they click into these okay. And the other thing I noticed is we didn't get the greatest, the, the supports do not separate on the ABS as well as they do on PLA. And I'm a little worried about this spring hanger up here. You see that one is not as thick as this one uh, is. So I don't know if that's going to hold up or not. All right, so let me go tweak this bore. And I think I'm going to try turning on tree supports. Uh, my experience with the tree supports in Bamboo Studio is it tends to just do regular standard supports under solid surfaces like this. But it seems to do a better job supporting small features like this or overhangs like uh, like this one here with tree supports. So let me give that a try and I'll bring you guys back. And I'm back, but I have good news and not so good news. Uh, I also changed the layer height on this one to 0.1 millimeters just to see if we clean up that surface finish and get an even better fit on the parts. And the surface finish now looks great. Like it printed beautifully in the 0.1 millimeter on all of our features. Uh, but not so much down here. And I guess this could have been a fluke, but this took long enough to print that I didn't want to just print another one with the same settings. But you can see the, uh, the supports just got messed up at the top and this turned into kind of spaghetti until it started printing solid again. So I would not trust this part. I mean, we're not going to see that face anyway, but we've actually lost thickness um, in, in this, this dimension, this, uh, like this plane here. So I don't want to try and use this. But we can at least see if 
uh, if this fits good now. Yeah, that's perfect. I don't actually know how much of that was due to changing the size of the bore and how, how much of it was due to printing this in 0.1 millimeter instead, but that's working well. So I'll leave that as is, but I'm going to print this guy in 0.2 millimeter layer height, which is what I did the first one in, and hopefully we'll have a finished part. All right, and I'm back. Same part you saw before, but printed in 0.2 millimeter layer height. So actually, first thing we should do is make sure that that bore still fits good. Yep, it's still good. And I left the supports on this one so you guys could see what I mean about the tree support. So we're, we're full solid down here. So um, underneath that part of the print, you can see it's, it's just solid support, but we have a nice clean edge so the supports didn't fail at the top on that transition layer. And wherever you have overhangs that are uh, just smaller surfaces is where it does tree supports. Uh, so for the spring perch up here, uh, for this overhang here, and even for the overhang up here where our bolt is going to go in. And actually, it did them all along this front edge here, too. And I think we're going to end up with a much cleaner edge there than we did on the other test pieces where we used just regular supports. But let's see how these guys break off. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean... I'll clean that up with a knife. Actually, I might not even need it. My finger, yeah, my fingernail popped that right off. So that looks already better. See this guy? Yep, that popped right off. Um, this one up here I'm worried about. If you, if you recall on our first test print in ABS, that was a mess. See how thin that got? Because it just, it just didn't have a good transition. So, yep, that is, oh, actually, no, the one I'm thinking of is buried inside the tree support. So let's see how that one fared. Break the top part off first. The yeah, top part came right off. That's super clear. Might need the pliers for this one. All right, I don't think I'm actually going to be able to, to, to get just that part off without removing this whole block down here. So let me off camera just break off all the supports uh, underneath here and see what we're left with. All right, I should have kept the camera rolling because I went over to the garbage can with my pliers to fight with this for a while and everything pretty much just pulled right off. I mean, you know, it's a fully supported surface, so it doesn't look super clean, but it is smooth and dimensionally accurate. Um, but let's see how this compares to the first one. So here's the first one in ABS, and then here's our second one. And you can see there is a, I'm trying to hold it up there where the camera can see it in that white background, there is a significant difference uh, in those pieces just switching to tree supports. Uh, that looks like we have pretty much the full thickness of, the, uh, of that part versus this one where we were down to just a thin section until it was solid. So that looks great. I think it's time to start assembling this guy and then see if it fits. All right, I mentioned I was going to grease this when I put it back together because the factory part was greased on those handles where they swing against the OD and the ID of this, uh, this post here. And that grease was still in really great shape, which leads me to believe since that car is a 2005 uh, that it was probably a silicone grease because this stuff holds up really well. Um, I don't know that it was super lube that was on there in the first place, but I have used this stuff for uh, similar projects. It's a silicone grease with PTFE added to it. I find it doesn't really break down. It holds up over a long period of time. Uh, I mean, not a ton comes in a tube, so you wouldn't want to use this to like pack trailer bearings. But for small projects like this, it really makes sense to use a high quality uh, silicone grease. Again, I'll link this down in the description. All right, that went back together really nicely. Everything clicked into place. Everything moves super smooth. It's not hanging up at all. Um, springs are returning them to exactly where they should be. I think it's time to actually go test this guy in the car. And I don't think I'm gonna film trying to install this. There's just not enough room there. Uh, if I filmed, I think all you're gonna see is like my arms and my hands as I'm doing something under the seat. So 
let me go try and get this installed in the vehicle and I'll bring you back and let you know how I made it out. All right, guys, I'm glad I did not try and record putting this in because even without the camera in the way, it was super tight over here to get the cables attached in the back and then pull it through, um, shove it through the carpet, get the bolt in place and get everything all back in nice and tidy. But it works and it works perfectly. Uh, fuel door and trunk open without any issues. Nothing feels like it's flexing. Nothing is binding up. I am really happy with this so far. I mean, I'm gonna leave the trim off of here for probably a month or two just to make sure that this guy does continue to work correctly since this is a bit of a pain to get off. But yeah, I'm calling this done. And this is probably one of the most complicated 3D prints I have ever attempted. I don't think it's the most complex. Probably that power supply case that I did is the most complex print that I did, but that was just creating something from scratch. It was my own design. If I ran into an issue, I could just kind of, you know, change it on the, the fly and redesign how it works. This had to fit in the factory position with the factory release levers, with the factory cables. Everything had to work just like the factory part, and I'm happy to say that it does. So I don't know if I mentioned it before, but this is actually my son's car, and I was just cleaning up in here and I realized something. I don't know if you meant to or not, but I think he left me a tip. Thanks, Max. All right, I told you guys at the end of the video that I would tell you how you can win one of these filament dryer boxes, and I'm just realizing right now that it does actually say snail right on the box. But for whatever reason on the Amazon listing for this and any place else I've seen it for sale, it just says filament dryer box, but I guess they do officially refer to it as the snail. So this is brand new in box. Like I said, I picked up two of these. Um, I kept one for my printer set up here and I'm gonna give this one away to you guys. And I dug out one of these couplers as well. I will slip this into the box before I ship it out. But Rich, how do I win this? Okay, well, first you've gotta like the video. You gotta be subscribed to the channel. Obvious prerequisites for pretty much any giveaway on any YouTube channel, right? Um, but let's make this interesting. For the last thing, I want you to tell me in your comment what you liked most about this video or what you, what you learned. What was your favorite part of the, the video? Because sometimes it's just nuggets, right? I mean, a lot of times I'll watch other YouTube videos and um, while what they were making isn't something I ever see myself making, but I'll pick up something in their design process or just in their build process that I didn't know or that I didn't know I needed. So um, if you come across something like that, if you got some, like, some nugget like that out of this video, tell me what it is in your comment. And the comment with the most likes is gonna win this. If you live in the US, I will cover the shipping charges for this and I will get it out to you. So there'll be absolutely no cost to you. If you live outside the US, we're gonna have to figure something out because in some countries it'll cost me more to send this thing to you than what this guy costs. So we'll figure something out. Um, but you don't have to live in the US to, to enter, but you do have to live in the continental United States for me to send it to you uh, for free as well. And guys, as always, thanks for hanging out in the shop with me for this week's video and design. If this is by chance your first time on the channel, I do a new video like this every single week. It comes out every Friday. It's always a functional print. We don't do any, you know, like cute, colorful stuff just for the heck of it. It's always something that, that adds functionality to something, repairs something, um, or might just be a completely from scratch design. If you're into that sort of thing, hit that subscribe button. And guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday.